And so everything started off well. My friends and I had a hard time buying tickets to this dang rock concert. I already imagined how I would tell my classmates about it. So why did I pass out an hour after it started and end up lying on the dusty asphalt? Why was my brain a mess and was I twisting from the inside out? Now, years later, I know that I wasn't the only one who was carried out of the concert unconscious. And now I know the reason for what happened that night. The battle between rock bands for the loudest concert has been going on for many years. The first blow to the reputation of their competitors and the ears of the audience was caused by the group Deep Purple. At their concert in June of 1972, they turned the power of specially selected and ordered equipment to the maximum. Hundreds of spectators were hit by this sound wave, and their festive mood suddenly inexplicably deteriorated. Many felt unwell. Several people even lost consciousness and were carried out of the hall. The volume of sound in London's Rainbow Theatre that day reached an incredible 117 decibels. Both the musicians and their producers achieved their goal. This concert was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the loudest concert of that time. But this is just rock music. You'll now learn that even sounds that we can't imagine our life without can be dangerous, and if you amplify them to a certain level, you could even create a black hole. According to researchers, noise pollution, which is now typical for large cities, reduces a person's life by an average of 10 to 12 years. This is 36% higher than the harm caused by smoking tobacco. For example, if a road with heavy traffic lies near your house, then you're exposed to the imperceptibly destructive effects of noise of 50 decibels or higher, even in your sleep. Yes, this isn't a rock concert, but the World Health Organization believes that sound wave attacks significantly increase the risk of heart disease, and every year thousands of people die prematurely from such disorders around the world. But we're going to go further and look at much more terrible sound attacks. Even with short-term impacts of powerful acoustic waves with a volume higher than 100 decibels, damage to the ear drums is possible. 130 decibels is the shot of a tank or the launch of a jet plane. And this is the maximum peak of malicious sound intrusion that we can face in our lives. Fortunately, it only lasts for a few seconds. But if a person falls under the destructive influence of such extreme acoustic effects for long hours, their brain, heart, and internal organs will be working at the limit of their capabilities, releasing maximum hormones, raising blood pressure, pumping liters of blood at the maximum load. The nervous system will be doing everything to somehow protect the unfortunate person and get them to faint as I did at that rock concert. In the end, the answer to the question of how long a person would live in this state is very simple, as long as their body was able to resist. It may last a few more hours, or even a day, but I'm sure none of us are going to find out this answer experimentally. But in the pursuit of technological power, humanity has created more terrible sounds. For example, the experimental Republic XF-84H aircraft made so much noise that it could be heard for 25 miles. Near the source, the intensity of the sound was enough to knock a person off their feet. The unfortunate crew members couldn't move. The noise also caused nausea and headaches. The engineers who were examining the aircraft had convulsions, and it's not surprising. The level of the sound intensity was in the region of 140 decibels. Fortunately, this air monster didn't go into mass production. Here is an even more impressive example of an artificial acoustic wave. It's created by the Saturn V launch vehicle, designed to transport people to the moon. This ship was the main project of the Apollo program, and according to a NASA report, 
At launch, it created a sound of absolutely incredible volume, more than 200 decibels. In fact, this destructive power can hardly even be called sound. Acoustic waves of this volume aren't transmitted by the air, but they push it forward, and part of the power of this sound goes into a crushing shockwave. Fortunately, this sound wasn't able to kill anyone. The space industry has strict safety rules. But the real man-made sources of record sound are bombs. The Soviet Tsar Bomba is not only the largest energy charge in the history of civilization, but also the most monstrous acoustic shock ever created by man. The absolute record of all time 224 decibels. I'd like to say that an explosion of such tremendous volume would kill a person instantly, but you know that the Tsar Bomba would kill anyone around, even if it went off silently. It's hard to imagine, but it turns out that human creations aren't the loudest that the planet has heard in the past hundreds of years. Here is the Krakatoa volcano. It exploded with lava and magma in 1883. The power of the eruption was such that the smoke rushed up from the volcano's mouth at a speed of 2,600 feet per second, and its spray shot to a height of 17 miles. Coincidentally, 100 miles from the volcano, special measuring devices were installed that recorded sound 172 decibels. Considering the distance, that's incredibly loud. For hundreds of miles, the sound was louder than the loudest concert. And according to scientists, in the epicenter of the explosion, it reached an intensity of 310 decibels. You understand that no one had time to hear it and try to realize this power. Everyone there died instantly. But the captain of the British ship Norham Castle, whose vessel was located 40 miles from the volcano, wrote, The explosions were so strong that half of my crew was left without hearing. I was sure that the day of judgment had come. Now let's look at a sound with an unreal power. 1,100 decibels. But first, let's understand one not-so-obvious thing. The sound volume scale is not linear, but logarithmic. This means that when you increase the value from 10 decibels to 20, the volume increases not twice, as it would seem natural, but 10 times. Therefore, to get the volume we need at 1,100 decibels, we have to add 95 zeros to the sound of a jet taking off. I will say this right away. In reality, nothing like this could be created on Earth. This is a volume level at which the shock wave would compress the air to a density sufficient to form a singularity, and hence, black micro holes. The weight of each of these micro holes, the size of a neutron, would be about 11 pounds. What would happen to them next? I would also like to know the answer to this question. Perhaps they would swallow each other until they merged into one round, black, devouring monster, which would devour our planet, or a star system or the entire galaxy. But still, most scientists agree that hawking radiation would soon cause these man-made black holes to evaporate. So I hope the end of the world doesn't come about in such a ridiculous way. I'm counting on a more graceful apocalypse. Which version of the end of the world would you prefer? Write in the comments.